I knew people that were on the plane that were, that were killed and I knew people on the ground uh, that, that died. It was the worst tragedy I've ever seen uh, and it was horrific. People should not die like these people died. This was a horrible way uh, to die. And then to see that carnage, uh, those of us, most of us, even hardened policemen and firemen needed counseling after witnessing that scene. In fact, I hired counselors to come to City Hall to give counseling to everyone who worked that scene. Every afternoon they had to go see it. I would dive in a swimming pool in a fetal position and just float trying to get the stench of the human flesh out of my nostrils and, 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 and off of my body. Because you got there very early. City Hall was not far from the crash site. Got there within minutes. I uh, heard a scream of one of my secretaries, a, a, just a, a, a banshee kind of scream, and she said a plane just went down in our neighborhood, and I ran out the back door, and, and we were at the crash scene within minutes, and it was a war zone. I mean, it was roaring flame and smoke and pouring rain. You had electrical wires just wiggling and, and hissing, gas hissing, it hit the gas lines. It, it, was a, it was a mess. And the guy you went to high school with, Chris Schultz, it hit his house first. Yes, yes it did. And actually a block later, another uh, person that I went to high school with saw it out her kitchen window as it landed directly across the street from her. You know everybody in these neighborhoods. I grew up with a lot of these people. I knew that neighborhood very, very well. And when I saw three people come from across the street, I really thought they were survivors. Now they were horribly burned. I mean, their skin was simply hanging off of them in some parts like rags. It was hard to watch. Those three people were Barbara Schultz, her daughter Rachel, and Rachel's friend Lisa Bai. A neighbor who saw the plane come down was right across the street from the Schultz house. She saw the unthinkable. And I looked up when I heard the trees back here and the, and the plane. I knew something was wrong and I looked up because that was on the end of my patio over here. And I looked up and I saw this, this huge piece of metal. Didn't realize it was that close to me, but uh, when I realized that the plane was falling and it was on the left side. Her story was documented by filmmaker Roy Anderson. The wing went right through that tree and knocked half of it off and the other half still standing. Unbelievable. And it, it made a trench in her yard in the, in the dirt. And it was just uh, inches from my sister-in-law's carport, just inches. The wing hit the street out here, which emptied all that fuel across the street right here, these two houses. And then the plane slid for two blocks. I had my two grandkids here. And by the time I got through the house, everything it looked like Hades had turned loose the smoke the fire the wind the rain Barbara and the two kids came out on the fence on the ground and it was sad because she had a t-shirt on and jeans and the t-shirt just had a string across her all the clothes had burned off and it, you know I've never seen uh, skin burned but it was like a sheet of wax coming down and it was the most hideous thing so I got them and brought them over here on the swing and I got some tile, uh, sheets out of my house wet them and I put them around them till the ambulance came and the ambulance driver said it was the best thing I could have done was put wet sheets around them because if it had been dry it would have taken all the skin completely off. Barbara Schultz survived along with her daughter Rachel Rachel's friend Lisa Bai died that night at the hospital. Aaron Broussard said if there is anything good that came out of this horrific tragedy, it was the change in detecting weather. As a result of this crash and a lot of lobbying by myself and others that, that were connected with this crash, Congress passed you know, action and, and they had wind shear devices put into airplanes around America and Doppler radar was created to detect wind shear. It was wind shear that caused this accident. And now uh, you won't have planes repeating the error of taking off in the middle 
of a wind shear event. So that, that was number one good. Number two good was there was a log jam between the city of New Orleans and St. Charles Parish regarding the expansion of the east-west runway. And the log jam was that it was about money and New Orleans wasn't gonna pay them money. So we were gonna keep having planes in Kenner take off to the east over houses as opposed to taking off to the west over swamp. And so my administration interjected. We worked out a formula of sharing the Kenner sales tax with St. Charles Parish, and that paved the way to build the east-west runway. So the east-west runway where air traffic was diverted over non-inhabitant area, that was a big plus that came out of this as well.